everyone. Thanks for joining me again. This is Jaja, my co-host. It's one o'clock in the morning and this is his time to get attention. Love you. So, before we get started, I just wanted to mention, yes, I do know the crappy quality. I don't have the resources or the quality and the equipment to produce what I want to produce, but we're not going to be picky. I'm going to use what I have and not complain. So with that said, we'll move on. <laughs> so this video is an in-depth video as much as I want to share in-depth video about my, excuse me, my background. And what I mean about that is I have a chemical imbalance that I was born with. At least that's what I have been told so far. I've been through all the tests that can induce my anxiety or my depression. And I know people get episodes and things like that. This is not to negate their feelings in and how they feel and everything. This is just to prove to myself that everyone's story is different and we shouldn't judge one another for that. So, as I said, I've been through all the tests necessary to rule out everything. And I just wanted to start from the beginning. And with that said, we'll get started. The earliest panic attack that I could recall, at the time I didn't know that's what it was, but knowing the information I know now, that's what it was, was when I was in fourth grade. I don't know, I only remember the school year, I don't remember the age. And I had seen my grandfather die of a heart attack in front of me. It was really traumatizing for a long time. Granted, you know, I was a young kid. Of course, it's going to be traumatizing. And after watching him die, it really clung to me. Everything was pretty much a trigger. If I felt something physical, I always assumed it was my heart. And I would freak out. I would start crying, I would I would ask everybody like, oh I'm feeling this way, like am I okay? And I was a healthy child, I'm still a healthy person. And that was really hard. So about a year after he passed, we were watching a movie, mother, my mother and I, called John Q, that has Denzel Washington in it great movie I recommend watching it just a little recap what it is about his son has this rare like heart condition type thing where it just grew too big for his body and he needed a heart transplant so Denzel does everything that he could possibly do to get that heart for his son and right off the bat it, it jumps right in his son is sick and he needs a new heart and I was sick as physically sick as someone could be. I was shaking. I was trembling. Even it, it got so bad. I was sweating and I was crying a little bit. And my mom was on the other was on the other couch and I was on the love seat. So I was I was by myself. And as the movie went on and his father was is was fighting for him. I couldn't help but think like, "Oh my god." I'm going to end up like that kid. I'm going to end up like my grandfather who died of a heart attack. And I associated his growing heart and the pain that they had on screen of what he was going through. All I could think of is that's how my grandfather felt and this is how I'm feeling. So end result is I'm dying. And that was the first time I've ever heard the word hypochondriac which I am not one of those. Turns out it's just anxiety and overthinking. So, as the movie was ending, I got up and I was bawling and I ran over to my mom and I was like, hey, am I gonna be okay? And she told me that I would be fine. 
Reason being, I was healthy, and I didn't believe her. Heck no, I didn't believe her. I climbed in my bunk bed and cried myself to sleep. Just thinking and reliving how my grandfather had just dropped in front of me that whole night. Sucks like I can remember that, to be honest with you. But I'm okay with that now. I, I wasn't before, clearly. And that was the first time I had ever had a panic attack. That growing chest pain of tightness and shallow, quick breaths. <laughs> it's just... I don't wish that upon anybody. It, uh, it is shitty, you know. Everybody has a different way of having a panic attack. And that's why it's so hard to talk about mental illness. Because I believe that everybody experiences it differently. Even though we have some things in common, their outcome could be different. My panic attack always starts with me sweating. It, it's not associated with nervousness or anything like that. It's just a full-blown, I'm sweaty, I my temperature rises, I get really hot, and oh. I'll start to cry, and then I'll lose my breath. And then I'll start to hyperventilate, and I'm blubbering and stuttering and everything. That's what it's developed into, but before, it was just those early stages of just sweating and getting hot and crying. So with that said, I felt that tightness all through middle school. And like I, I don't know if I mentioned it, but the, I didn't know what it was. I just thought it was nerves, really, really bad nerves. I was always nervous. I was always worried. And it was over the smallest of things and it was always coming back to how I felt about myself. And everybody is self-conscious at that age, or at least I believe they are. There's always something that they don't like about themselves. Everybody's having puberty, you name it. And I was just self-conscious. I I hated my body. I hated that I had boobs and I just hated my shape. I hated everything about myself. So I tried to hide it with baggy clothes and that didn't help through middle school. I was definitely a tomboy. But at the same time, even though I was ashamed of my body, I wasn't ashamed of my personality. And I love that about myself. I let my brain shine. Now I'm okay with my body, don't get me wrong. But back then, I wasn't. And I had a lot of trouble making friends. I couldn't relate to anybody. I would want to say on a spiritual level, I played a lot of video games. My sisters and I would get, to get together around our PlayStation 1, our PlayStation 2, our GameCube, and our um, Nintendo 64. And we would just play games together. And games weren't really popular with girls back then, so it was always the dudes that played video games. That, there's no disrespect or no topic there, so we're just gonna move on. <laughs> um, but I, I wanted girlfriends. I, I definitely did not want a male friend or anything like that. Um, all the males, all the boys, in that grade were very cocky and had bad attitudes and it's funny because now that I've watched everyone that I went to school with through middle school and high school and into my adult life they have changed dramatically which I'm very happy for but I was always worried I wasn't gonna find anybody that would want to be my friend that would want to hang out with me that would want me to come over to their house I was I was worried. I had that tightness. I was I was a great student. I thought it was funny. So I would be like that class clown when I could just to get attention. I wanted some kind of attention back then. And I think everybody did too. Don't get me wrong. 
I'm nothing special. I'm just talking about how I had that anxiety. Um, moving on from that, high the first two years of high school, so my, um, sorry, let me go back a step. Um, seventh grade, I had that issue. Um, the tightness was still there. I was still self-conscious and I was still worried I wasn't going to make the friends that I wanted or the friends that I would see around me. Everybody had their own clique and I was that floater. I would try and connect with all of these people in a way that I could and not necessarily wiggle my way through but as soon as I knew one person then I would get to know everybody else. So that's how I floated between all of the groups. And there was there was a good few. There was a handful that I had floated to where I would go to their house and, and things like that. And that felt good having that luxury and that friendship or whatever. And then at, in eighth grade, I wanted to drop my tomboyish feel and uh, be more feminine. I, uh, during that time, the whole scene phase was going on, so... I was definitely jealous of the girls that could dress that way and do their makeup that way. I still am, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, it's a it's a it's a healthy jealousy, not a hateful one. So I had dropped it. I moved on to being more feminine. I wore a lot of pants and I I wore shirts that I felt comfortable in, etc. etc. Um. I had issues with <laughs> with um, speaking out loud. I think everyone was like that, like I said before, but I stuttered the whole time I would read out loud and I hated that. So being on the spot like that, knowing that everybody saw my flaws, tore me up. And I would think about it like all day long. I would just, what could I have done differently? Different scenarios in my head, you know, the whole shebang. But that was my middle school. So remember what I said about floating between the groups. Because this applied in high school as well. I didn't have any anxiety or depression. I had depression. And blah, 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 blah. Sorry. I didn't have anxiety when I was a freshman or a sophomore. I was very confident in myself. I was confident in my grades. And I was genuinely happy my freshman year. I didn't do what I wanted to do because the school was really big and intimidating. And I did have a lot of moments like in, in gym where I didn't feel comfortable. Once again, where we had to change in front of everybody and shower in front of everybody. Like those open stalls. I did get courageous a few times to do it, but that didn't last long. Um, and I was just happy. I got to know a lot of people that stuck with me through high school. Sadly, not into my adult years, but think about it now, I'm pretty, pretty satisfied with how that came out because if we were still friends, my life would be totally different and I like the way I am now. And I don't like those people. Not a negative way. Unless it's a negative way. I don't think it is. You can dislike somebody. Just don't be mean about it. So, sophomore year was the same. I continued to go to school with the same people, just at a different location. And I did student council. I did the video announcements. I, I did a lot of things that I was proud of that confidence had boosted itself up and I felt amazing and there was a moment here in my sophomore year where a friend was in need of help she was sorry I need chapstick so I, that's why I keep biting my lip she was standing in the hallway crying and 
I don't even remember what I was doing. But she was sitting underneath the stairs, and I went to go and comfort her. She was someone I considered a best friend at one time. So when I approached her, she was trembling, sobbing, and I didn't know what to do. So I went up there, and I was like, hey, you good? And she wasn't. The whole time, she was just shaking her no. No. Tears flying everywhere. Just kidding. And... She had told me that she couldn't sit in class anymore. And I was confused. I was like, well, did something happen? Did you get in trouble? Et cetera, et cetera. It was her study hall. And she couldn't handle sitting there in the quiet with all those people in the room. And I was so oblivious and so ignorant. I would call myself ignorant in that situation because... I didn't know how to help her, but at the same time, I was just like, well, that's stupid. Why would you feel that way? So I told her it would be okay. I gave her a hug, and that didn't help the situation at all. And she had left, sobbing. And I remember it clearly because I soon found out that she was bipolar. She got help, got some treatment to start her life. And I'm, I'm happy for her. She's, she's doing well still. But, like I said at the time, I was like, oh, that's stupid. I don't believe in that stuff. But here I am now. So my junior year is pretty much where it all started. And it went down from hill. Went down from hill? Went downhill after that. So, I was in honors. I was looking forward to another year on student council. I was still doing the video announcements, recording and filming and stuff like that. I was eager to start, but the summer before my junior year started, I was given all sorts of homework that I had to do before school started. And I didn't do it. Totally procrastinated it all. I spent that whole summer playing video games at my dad's place, his workplace. Um, he travels for work in Texas. So when school comes around, I didn't do it, any of it. None of it. And it hit me. That, that tightness in my chest. But it was so quick. I, it was like someone took a metal bat and just right in my chest knocking the wind out of me and I'm, I'm sitting there in this stupid fucking u-shape in the middle where everyone can see me and I'm just <gasps> I, I I'm trying to wipe my tears away as quick as they're they're coming out and I'm trying to not draw attention to myself. While I sat there in front of my peers and the teachers back to us. And I was like, holy shit. I don't know what I'm doing. And it progressed from there. I, <laughs> I soon learned that I did not know a damn thing like I thought I did. And I jumped into this deep end with no floaties. I could swim, but I definitely need some floaties. Because it was hard. So, I'm... I want to say about six weeks into the first semester, I tried my best to do everything, but I couldn't keep up. All the negative thoughts that I could think of of you're stupid you can't study this material you're clearly not studying for this material I I couldn't pay attention to anything that was the hard part as soon as I wanted to do it I would lose that motivation to, to do it I didn't have it I, I would lose I would lose it instantly 
and I just stopped. I stopped altogether. I would wear, I wore sweatpants to school so many times with a jacket and That's the hardest part. Um, in the first semester after all that had happened in my, my AP classes, knowing that I wasn't fit for it or telling myself I wasn't fit for it, I switched to normal classes. But I, it wouldn't be in effect until the second semester. And I couldn't handle that. So I didn't go to school. And when I did, I would skip classes. It was really bad. Um, there were a lot of times from September all the way to December, it was very spotty. I didn't show up to school like I said, and when I did and I couldn't handle it, I would call my mom. I was crying and I was begging her, please just come get me. It, I, I can't do it. I, I physically and mentally could not be in the school. Going back to getting hit in the chest with that metal baseball bat, that's how I felt every time I walked through the doors. When I got off the bus, in the humidity early in the morning into that AC filled facility with all those kids walking in. I didn't feel scared or anything and I didn't feel anxious but as soon as I had walked in the room and I had put my my notebooks on the table and I'm looking at the work that I should have done or the work that I did it never felt enough. And I talked myself down a lot for it. Um, I can't do math for shit. I've been in extra math classes since I was in eighth grade. And that, I just can't, I couldn't do math. And I'm not ashamed of it. I, there was a lot of kids that I related to and if you're watching this then you know we we had a lot of fun in those classes and we I believe we truly learned I loved I love those because I felt like I knew what I was talking about even though I wasn't able to describe it my work showed for it and I, I felt good but everything else mm, nah. nah except for reading and writing I really enjoyed that you can I can easily read something and produce any essay you want just because I love that stuff um meow. sorry I feel like I just got off track but that was my junior year and then my senior year was the same it was really spotty I went to school but I wasn't anxious I didn't feel that tightness I was just depressed where I would get up whatever was on my floor I would put put it on because I knew I had to go and I wanted to try and make something of myself but it wasn't enough so a lot of the a lot of the days I stayed home and then towards the end, I just stopped going all together. So that was my high school in a nutshell. There, my junior year was the, the starting point of it all. Like, for me to understand it, or not really understand it, but notice what it was. And thinking about it now, it's, it was the biggest impact my life and I'm not even saying everything that has ever happened to me in this video but that was definitely one of them
My adult life has been the same. Instead of it affecting me in school, it affected me in my workplaces. And that is a no-no when you're an adult. And not knowing how to handle that or identify with it was hard. I tried so many things to try and help myself so I could go to work and pay my bills. But it wasn't enough. No matter what I did, it wasn't enough. And it really shone through when I was 19. I'm not even going to talk about 19 because that's not too related to what we're talking about. So from 20 all the way to 23, so now, I worked a lot of jobs. Like, my background <laughs> is wild. Like, I, I, would, I would work a job. I would go through the training. And if I didn't feel like they were producing enough to train me, I wouldn't show up the next week. I wouldn't do it. I had learned through all of my jobs that it's easier to know everything up front for me personally before I could actually work here or there, that job. <laughs> and I just knew my, that was, a, I knew my self worth there. That for me to work, I have to know everything up front and I have to like it in a certain way. I'm not like other people who can work a shitty job to make money. No matter how many ways I look at it or try to approach it, it's not going to work for me and, and it never has. The past has really shown that. So whenever I truly hated a job and I felt like I couldn't get out because I didn't have a job scheduled like to replace it I would get depressed hard where I would sleep 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 and I wouldn't talk to anybody just those hardcore depressive modes I have written some of my recent depressive modes episodes <laughs> I will link them in the description if you are interested in those because even on video I don't know how to describe them and that's why I wrote in here playing with something he shouldn't And that's why I wrote these blog posts to try and get whatever I could out. And that has what led me up to now. I have noticed through therapy and from referencing my journal, every two to three months I will go down a depressive road that is pretty much inevitable. Nothing triggers it from what I have looked back on. It just comes. And I don't know if it's like a, a resting point because my body's trying to recoup from all of the pent up energy that I've had or if it's just he's mad. Or if it's just the depression coming to say hi, I, I couldn't tell you. And that might take a long time to figure out. But every two to three months it would happen. And it would, the last, mm, nope, not last year this time. Yes, last year this time. I apologize. I have been here for a whole year. The last year has been really well for me in a sense of I felt more of the anxiety because I had things I needed to accomplish and I couldn't do it and then that would trigger my depression I'm literally rambling here but anyways every few months it would happen 
and then I would want to rethink life and it was like a mini midlife crisis just two to three times a year in the summer I I have seasonal depression uh, excuse me let me back up I have clinical depression just a I have clinical depression so definitely go and Google that I I have a seasonal depression as well because every time summer comes around I don't want to go outside I hate the Sun I literally get so lethargic I'm like a fried up worm on the sidewalk like I'm a crisp and everything and I'm just waiting for the bl the wind to blow me over into some place where I can die peacefully again it's uh, anyways like I, I said I'm rambling it's God knows what time it's like one two in the morning one o'clock in the morning so that is my very undetailed about me with anxiety and depression. I think in the future I would want to engage with different things more that focuses about me um, and my hobbies and, and things like that, but I just wanted to talk to you on this level. I didn't want you to think Actually, it's not even that. I wanted to talk about this. I wanted people to know this is what I personally went through. And I really want to connect and relate to people that felt the same way or are feeling the same way. To help encourage them to do the same. I want to help others with their mental health. And making this video definitely helped me realize that. I mean, through my whole journey from this past June, I I wanted to help others because I've learned so much that is not out there and that's my goal. So, that's what this video is all about. So, to end this, I would like to challenge you or Question of the day, when was the first time you had experienced any sort of mental illness, whether it's being bipolar, an anxiety episode, a depressive episode, um, if you're schizophrenic and you, and you had something similar to those lines, um, bulimia, anorexia, things like that, mental health is really really big it's bulky it has a lot of subtopics and these are the only ones I relate to but I also just wanted to get that out there that it's not just these two that are the main there are other ones too so let me know in the comments when was the first time you had noticed something different about yourself and thanks for joining me stay tuned for my next video which is probably going to be about my self-care tips. Thanks guys!